Catastrophe just ended its four-season run with a perfectly ambiguous ending. I'm Rob LeCuria, Senior Editor of Gold Derby. And if you haven't seen it yet, go away, watch the final season, then come back, because I'm joined today by the show's stars and creators, Sharon Horgan and Rob Delaney, to chat all things Catastrophe. Guys, I want to talk about the ending because offline I was just saying to Sharon how much um, I loved it. And um, but I'm still kind of you know in two minds about whether it was a it was happy or tragic. Sharon, what do you think? <laughs> um, well, we sort of deliberately um, left it ambiguous. Or, although um, some people think it wasn't ambiguous at all, um, some people um, lean quite heavily towards you know um, something terrible happening. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I like to, I, I like to lean towards, I know you don't like me saying it, but happy ending, um, because that it's sort of, I think, I think, I don't know, it kind of, it ma makes me happy. And I, I like the thought of them having a life, you know, beyond. I think it's sort of, the idea was that the fans of the show could sort of, write their own ending and I suppose I'm sort of greedy for the story to continue you know and that this whole life is sort of going on for them for them both um but but at the same time we really really love that it messed with people we we love that people got like like trying <laughs> throwing their tables upside down go what the hell um we like we like letting people figure it out yeah, I mean, it's, I sort of like to think of it as like, oh, the camera just ran out of film and uh, they're still there and they're enjoying themselves and they're happy and they're faced with a massive challenge and you don't know how that's gonna end because that's like life, you know? And then greedily, uh, since it ends with such a serious question mark, it leaves, it makes the audience get involved more and they have to debate it and think about it and talk about it. So even though the show is over, people still have to grapple with it. And so you're still thinking about our show, which, you know, makes me happy. Yeah, that makes sense. But we're still, we are still thinking about it. We are grappling. Like you, when, when Rob turns around and looks at the sign and then says, stuff it, I'll go in and join her in the, in the lake. Like I started getting really stressed out. And then uh, the, the, the camera um, kind of pans out and we see them, maybe kind of turning back to the shore and then arcade fire is playing. It's so perfect for the show. <laughs> but uh, my question, I should probably have a question. Sharon, like I imagine there's a lot of pressure because like, for example, Damon Lindelof is on the record about the abuse that he copped for the, how he ended Lost and Game of Thrones has just ended and I'm sure those creators are probably copying it too. Um, how, did that play on your mind at all about sticking the landing? Oh yeah, well, first of all, it was the sea it wasn't a lake. Right. Okay. Sorry. Because <laughs> you know, <laughs> big metaphor going on there. But um, uh, we had stick in the landing. We yeah, we really, really cared. I mean, we thought of that ending of, of them, you know, them being in the sea, like before we started, um, before we started writing the, the series, really. So uh, the season. So yeah, it was massive for us. But I don't know. I don't think we ever thought about it in terms of getting flack. I don't think we ever thought, well, we better, um, you know, not 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 sort of wind anyone up. I remember like the night before it went out, texting Rob and going, you know, I just hope they enjoy it as an episode. I, I hope they just don't focus on the ending. And it was all people were talking about. And then I was like, oh no, I I, li I like that actually because because it did really feel like we pulled something off, you know, and. Uh, you know, we were ambi we were always ambitious for this series, but we were particularly ambitious for that last episode. And so it all kind of, you know, it, it all sort of worked out. So, um, yeah, we thought about it, but I wasn't thinking about people getting angry. Yeah, we didn't really stress <laughs> out about that. I mean, people have gotten angry at us before for things, and that's okay. I mean, you know, I think in the aggregate, people uh, who like the show like it, and uh, but it's fun to press people's buttons and stuff. And uh, also you can't really hamstring your stuff. I think it's actually quite unfortunate that people can get instant feedback, you know, and um, and weigh in on stuff. Like there's that petition that people don't want Robert Pattinson to play Batman or something. And that's when people just need to go 
just really walk in the woods for a while and maybe get lost and starve to death because I don't care what they think about Robert Pattinson. And we were going to do the ending that we were going to do. And then that was that, whether people liked it or not. Thankfully, most people liked it. Yeah, it's 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 thankful that most people liked it, and and as you say, Rob, it doesn't matter what people really think at the end of the day. It's your show, and you end it the way you want to end it. But it it really went mm -hmm. quite well. It was fitting for me because um, throughout the four seasons, I've always found catastrophe to be quite unpredictable. Um, I never really knew where you were taking us, and you know, I was really excited about going along for the journey. But I was wondering um, whether does that ever become tiring like Sharon was it ever was it particularly challenging to pull off this season that unpredictableness that this show has yeah sorry just I've just eaten my breakfast um yeah it it, it was actually in fact it, it sort of it was the hardest to write for I think two reasons and one was we knew it was going to be the last one so we were trying to write um a season that felt like satisfying as a last season but also not feeling like the end all the way through you know we wanted it to just feel like the show so we were desperate for it to have the same kind of impact and just be funny and silly and and you know serious when it needed to be serious and deep when it needed to be but we didn't want it to wear its sort of final season too heavily on on its sleeve um but um Ha, I forgot what my second reason was. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, because we didn't want to repeat ourselves. We 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 were, you know, the whole thing was we we enjoy writing it, and we don't, um, you know, we enjoy writing it because we always hopefully feel like we're saying something new or coming at it from an angle that hasn't been done before. And we had this sort of fear that um, that it was going to become tired, and that people would sort of notice the the tricks and the sort of tropes that we use so trying to avoid that keeping it fresh like fourth season round was you know it was it was hard for sure um yeah i mean i guess we don't try to think of like so much as uh being unpredictable i mean i guess life is unpredictable so we're trying to be honest not necessarily honest in the facts you know since some some pretty wild things happen in the show but honest in the feelings and so I think if you, uh, you know, follow any real genuine human interactions in a life, particularly with a family and an extended family, things can get crazy. You know, like you look at your own life and you're like, I can't believe that thing happened two weeks ago or whatever, you know. So we just try to preserve that feel. And certainly nothing in the show that happens is, you know, uh, science fiction or anything. It's all pretty, you know, nitty gritty stuff. So, but yeah, we do, we, you know, of course, yeah, you want to stay as that of folks and sort of lead them on a journey that they're enjoying. And, and so, yeah. Yeah. I think it's important that for people who aren't really familiar with the show that it is really realistic. Like I was going to say this particular season, I felt was slightly edgier, a bit darker than the other seasons. But I remember two years ago, Rob, you saying to me that, um, you had like a, a laugh per page ratio that you both are very conscious of. And so I was just wondering like, Sharon, when you're writing the show, um, especially, especially this season with all the stuff that these two people are gonna be going through, um, did you find it particularly challenging to also make or keep the show as funny as it always has been? Yeah, yeah, it was why we, it, it's why episode one was the hardest to kind of um, figure out was, you know, um, because this terrible, awful thing had happened at the end of um, season three. And, you know, we obviously wanted to address it. We didn't want it to be sort of sitcom land where everything's sort of reset and then, you know, everything's fine. We, we had to sort of deal with the fact that he'd put himself and his family in danger and that there was, you know, this sort of, they really, really, disappointed each other and um, made mistakes and, you know, um, and all the other threads that are sort of running along through it, like Rob's alcoholism and and all of that. And uh, and so we that's when we came up with a neck brace, really, because we kind of thought <laughs> if he's wearing a neck brace, we could, he's going to look silly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but we wanted some sort of physical kind of reminder of what had happened. And 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 then like we talked about it quite a lot and we both sort of agreed that 
even when terrible things happen to you within a relationship, you know, you're still gonna laugh at, at stupid stuff and you're still gonna forget for a second that you're angry with each other. And we kind of let that sort of play into it a lot. And I think by the time we got to um, episode six, we knew that was gonna be a relatively heavy episode, but we also had all these sort of um, like support systems for, for funny, you know, um, like Sharon feeling like her holiday had been ruined or, you know, like um, the eulogy for, for Carrie and, you know, finding that email and like Rob's dad being yellow and looking like a minion. We knew there was enough like silly, funny things that were like crutches sort of for, for us while we sort of plowed through the kind of harder storyline. So we kind of felt by the time we got to, yes, it, it was harder to, to write for those, those reasons, but I think we, we kind of loved it the most. Like we, we really enjoyed writing it, especially episode six. Yeah, yeah, joke per page ratio is uh, always uh, most important for the show. We, I mean, I hope in the future that if you were gonna, you know, uh, classify our show, it would be in the same stack uh, as like Steinfeld rather than a stack of like gritty comedy dramas. Like I know there's drama in our show, but it's not a comedy drama. It's a comedy. There's some drama in it. And if you're not laughing quite a bit each minute, even if serious stuff is happening, then uh, I know I feel like a, a total failure. Yeah, you've got to laugh constantly. It is a, it definitely is a comedy. I'm just, as you guys were talking, I was thinking about some of the one-liners. I reckon Catastrophe, uh, in years to come, when I think back and others probably think back, will remember the one-liners. Like, I can just aut automatically think of, like, when, um, Sharon, you called the US a white nationalist ethno state, or even <laughs> Rob, I love that. I don't know if you came up with that, but that's amazing. Or the <laughs> fight where Rob says, Sharon's mean and selfish and no one likes you. Like, that's a really horrible thing to say, but I actually laughed out loud. I don't know why, it's the way it was delivered. Or the, <laughs> the second last episode where, um, you know, the principal with the moisture patch, like all of that stuff. Like, who comes up with the most of the one liners? Who does it? I, I need to know. Who, uh, Rob, Rob's the king of oh. one liners. I mean, it, it, all, it all sort of, you know, merges a bit, but like, you know, yeah. the white, Nationalist ethno state. I'm pretty sure that came straight out, straight out of his mouth with no <laughs> editing. You know, um, oh I mean the stuff where we're sort of fighting and battling each other. It's it's we sort of work it out in the room. But I would I would you know quite openly say that the really sort of zingy one liners, Delaney. <laughs> I would challenge that <laughs> and say no. I mean Sharon's gifted at that stuff. I mean all all I have to say to that one is um, the emancipation of Flybert and Crisp uh, came out of Sharon's mouth like a m machine gun. And, uh, you know, yes, she's gifted. <laughs> like, it's like even the um, the friend of Sharon at the school when she was saying something about like, she's going to squeeze out the knowledge, milk knowledge out of her tits. It was just, it just, I was screaming. <laughs> but that's gold, gold. And that, I mean, what a privilege to make people like laugh to the point where they have stomach pains. Like, does that occur to you that you're giving all these people joy and probably horror as well when we're seeing these two people and what they have to put up with? Oh, I, I love it. It's the greatest. It's the best. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a proper drug, you know. Um, and like, there's loads of things I'll, I'll miss about the show, including like writing with Rob and, you know, hanging out with that team of people. But people's you know, people on the street sort of reaction to the show when it when a new episode would come out, or that's like such a pleasure. Um, so we we should talk about Carrie Fisher. I know you guys have probably asked about her all the time. It was, I mean, a lot of us are still shocked that she's gone, and um, she had such a big role to play on this show. She was Emmy nominated for her amazing, funny performance on the sh on uh, season three. Um, Let's just focus maybe on the way that you guys eulogized her character in this series finale because it was so effective, especially with Rob on the beach. It was really funny, but also quite heartbreaking. Um, uh, talk us through the process of how you got that right for eulogizing Carrie and, of course, her character. Um, well, we um, it, it, it was it was a sort of a, a later idea 
the the finding the email and i'm so glad we had it because you know we needed to find a way to make the the funeral of of, of mia quite different from my dad's which we'd only just done in 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 season three and so like finding a way to deal with not just mia's death but carrie fisher's death because she was so loved and revered and and known like all over the world it was like a massive responsibility and we we felt like over the the seasons we only really sort of saw her as a as a sort of awful person um right up until um season three when you you kind of you got to find out a lot more about her you know her um, abusive husband and how much she cared about Rob and even that she cared about Sharon you know in a way and you sort of you sort of um, saw the the woman and you know the history behind that character so we we just you know we tapped into her um, eBay thing we just thought you know she spends an awful lot of time online and what if she was just the kind of person who was donating money to various different causes and then I don't know how like the Mike uh, Pence insult came up, but it, it just felt like such a tribute to Carrie to allow her, you know, to allow her to be in the episode to the extent that she gets to to criticize the <laughs> current <laughs> political climate. You know, we were genuinely thinking what would make her happy, you know, and um, what would get her voice um, across. Yeah, I mean, if you're writing your own eulogy, you're probably not going to insult Mike Pence. But if you don't know you're writing your own eulogy, you might wind up writing something even more honest. And so it really contained the gamut of her in that in that email. She's doing a wonderful, kind thing that truly is helping people. It's kind of wrapped up in her obsessions with buying little trinkets on eBay and selling them. And um, and so it, it was just sort of a wonderful snapshot. We really tried to get something sort of just nuanced and shaded that would really show an accurate picture of the character that Carrie had built over the previous three seasons. So, you know, I hope that we pulled that off. Yeah, I think you did pull it off. So as a final question, it's a big moment for me as a fan. Um, I get to say what my ultimate takeaway from the show is because I'm what I want to lead to is what you, is most commonly um, said to you by fans and people on the street and family and friends and critics. For me, the show is obviously, it made me feel really introspective about my marriage, about relationships, and it made me laugh my tits off. I loved it to pieces. That's my feedback. I'm wondering what is your, what do you mostly hear from people now that the show is done and dusted and you've done your four seasons? Um, what's the most common thread you're hearing from people now that the show's over? Um, now that it's over, I mean, Mostly it's people asking us for it not to be over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and like accusing us of being lazy <laughs> or yeah. any sort of number of, of, of things like that. But I mean, in general, as it went along, it was like, and Rob will say the same thing, it is people feeling like we were listening to sitting in their homes, um, you know, um, basically transcribing their their lives. So I think it was that. I think it was people feeling like they were being represented on screen and not being necessarily represented in a idealistic way, just in a real way um, where they didn't have to feel like their sort of the way they behave and their behavior as parents or or partners or you know sons and daughters is is kind of normal like you can do terrible things it doesn't mean that you're a, a terrible um person and so i just think seeing that sort of reflected back of them out of the tv screen is you know kind of makes you feel a bit better so that would be the main thing yeah yeah i mean people just saying that they could identify with it so much you know i'm just grateful really that we were able to I mean, if you think about it, it's a very, very simple show. I mean, it's a domestic comedy about a husband and wife. I mean, it's the basic, it's the most basic structure since Honeymooners or I Love Lucy, and that we were able to have that format, but yet elicit from people like, oh God, you know, I can't, you know, or laughing. I mean, it's really great, you know, because there's, 
like I love big, giant, crazy things like Avengers and Game of Thrones and stuff. Those are wonderful. Um, but that we were able to with like, you know, just sort of in miniature, you know, looking at a family and a husband and wife and the way to do that and, and really get people just so wound up in good ways and bad ways and, you know, but primarily strong ways get really wrapped up in it. Just uh, this is something that we're very happy we were able to do. Yeah, well, thank you both so much for four really awesome seasons of TV and thanks again for your time today. Uh, we really appreciate it. You're Thank welcome. You. Nice um, to meet you. To all Catastrophe fans, go to goldderby.com right now, make your predictions, compete against us know it alls Before you go, click, subs click subscribe and watch our great chats with contenders just like Rob and Sharon. Thanks. See you later.